Despite popular belief that the thick-browed Neanderthals were only capable of animalistic savagery, new discoveries from 2023 in France tell a different story about Neanderthals and our ancestors. Incredibly, modern humans, wielding bows and arrows, invaded Neanderthal territory in France nearly 57,000 years ago. The group of anatomically modern humans made their way into southern France, deep into Neanderthal territory. And they came armed to the teeth, with the first bow and arrow technology to reach Europe, 15,000 years earlier than previously thought. The arrowheads were discovered in a sediment layer dating between 56,800 to 51,700 years ago, a truly monumental discovery. Meanwhile, 57,300 years ago Neanderthals used their fingers to carve strange symbols into the wall of a cave in central France, just 300 miles to the west of this modern human settlement. The engravings are interpreted as among the oldest known examples of Neanderthal art, if not the oldest. According to popular theory, Europe was only inhabited by Neanderthals 57,000 years ago. At the time, modern humans did not exist in Europe. As a result, the wall markings and artifacts discovered cannot be attributed to our direct ancestors, say researchers. The current theory that Neanderthals were an inferior, archaic, or otherwise peculiar side branch of humanity, which eventually became extinct without contributing to modern humanity, has its origins in anti-evolutionary interpretations known as hominid catastrophism, which was used to explain the sequence of forms in the hominid fossil record. Initially, scientists thought that Neanderthals were incapable of complex thought and lived in a barbaric manner. Yet as evidence of these species' surprising human-like traits has accumulated, some scientists' perspectives have shifted. And what 21st-century archaeology reveals is a highly compelling portrait of a different type of human, following their own path. Jean-Claude Marquet, a French archaeologist, entered the La roche cave in 1974. He suspected he discovered a human creation after examining the delicate lines on the walls. Scrapers and modified stones, Mysterian artifacts, suggested a Neanderthal presence. The question was whether Neanderthals had left their artistic imprint at the site. Fearing a lack of solid evidence, researchers abandoned the cave for nearly four decades, but the mystery of Neanderthal art persisted. The cave, first discovered in 1846, remained inaccessible until 1912, when the owner of the land on which it is located excavated the blocked-up entrance, which he presented in a note illustrated with photos and a map. But the cave's research only really got started 15 years ago, thanks to a multidisciplinary project. This work led to the discovery and contextualization of the engravings, which were discovered on a 25-foot-long wall of a kind of soft stone, called tuffo, covered at the top by a thin film of weathering. Fifteen years after the resumption of excavations at the site, the engravings have finally been dated to at least 57,300 years ago and, thanks to stratigraphy, but probably to around 75,000 years ago, making this the oldest decorated cave in France, if not Europe. Tools, animal bones, and, most notably, the engravings were discovered. At the same time, Researchers examined cave sediment and discovered that the cave had been sealed off by mud residues and soil sediments for over 50,000 years before being rediscovered. This makes the cave system unique, a veritable time capsule, similar to a Neanderthal Pompeii. The majority of these marks were made with fingers, either by simply touching the weathered rock surface or by moving the finger. They depict non-figurative patterns, some as simple as finger impacts surrounding a large fossil embedded in the rock or forming long lines covering a large area, while others are more complex. The wall marks and artifacts can thus only be attributed to these Neanderthals and while the clear geometric shapes with parallel and triangular lines indicate that these marks were not scribbled on the wall by chance, the researcher has no idea what they represent. But they could only have been made by someone who proceeded with planning and understanding, and whether it was art as such or a form of record-keeping is debatable. In fact, every investigation will help to dismantle the traditional consensus that Neanderthals were mentally inferior humans, and reinforce the perception that they were more like modern humans. Recent research has revealed a great deal about the cultural complexities of Neanderthals. 
Nonetheless, little is known about their symbolic or artistic manifestation. Only a few symbolic productions are attributed to Neanderthals, and their interpretation is frequently contested. The series of non-figurative markings on the wall are interpreted as finger flutings, or marks made by human hands. The researchers used photogrammetry to create 3D models of these markings, and compared them to known and experimental human markings. The researchers concluded that these engravings are deliberate, organized, and intentional shapes created by human hands based on their shape, spacing, and arrangement. An experimental study in precise measurements, using the most effective methods, including photogrammetry, enabled such markings to be characterized, recorded, and experimentally reproduced, confirming their human nature and ruling out any hypothesis of functional, natural, animal, geological, or accidental production. Another discovery, what is being called a small oil lamp, is being examined by experts to see if it contains pigments or such substances, that could help identify the fuel used. The small receptacle was discovered in the rubble from the 1912 excavations, according to researchers. In the cave, on the walls, there are two red spots which are not ochre spots, but this color is due to the fact that the surface of the wall was heated by the wick of a lamp. The larger spot is above a small concave basin that appears to have been used as a lamp. The concavity contains mainly manganese oxide, which plays a role in lighting lamps in prehistoric caves. The second spot is on a vertical wall, but has a small flat area that may have supported a small bowl that would have served as a lamp, say researchers. The archaeologists also discovered an object resembling a creepy human or animal face in the cave, and recent research revealed that Neanderthals were most likely to blame. The so-called Mask of La roche catar also known as the Mysterian Proto-Figurine, is a mysterious 75,000-year-old artifact. The artifact is a piece of flat flint that has been shaped to resemble the upper half of a face. Eyes have been interpreted as a piece of bone pushed through a hole in the stone. On the other hand, this mask is said to be highly inconvenient. It makes a nonsense of the view that clueless Neanderthals could only copy their cultural superiors, the Cro-Magnons. The question then became exactly when these engravings were made. A soil analysis revealed that the cave had been partially flooded on several occasions by the nearby river, whose current course is only two miles away. Flood silt infiltrated the cave over millennia, covering archaeological layers containing Neanderthal tools. This silt eventually blocked the cave's entrance, hiding it beneath several feet of sediment, and the closure was determined by using optically stimulated luminescence to determine the age of these deposits. New dating from 2023 indicate that the cave was sealed around 57,300 years ago, when Homo sapiens was not yet present in Europe. The base of the main layer of silt from the Loire overflow, which covered the archaeological layers, which were most likely contemporaneous with the parietal engravings, has been dated twice, yielding an age of around 75,000 years. Scientific evidence are used to confirm the anthropogenic origin of the spatially structured, non-figurative marks found within the cave. Cave closure occurred long before Homo sapiens arrived in the region, and all artifacts from the cave are typical Mysterian lithics, in Western Europe, these are attributed to Homo neanderthalensis. The engravings, researchers conclude, are unambiguous examples of Neanderthal abstract design. The findings, call into question what we thought we knew about early European creativity. The Neanderthals appear to have been the first art enthusiasts in Europe, displaying their creative side in ways we never thought possible, although this art leaves something to be desired, in comparison to Homo sapiens art that would be created a few millennia later in other French caves. Nonetheless, this discovery sheds new light on our ancestors' artistic abilities, opening a window into the rich history of human expression. The cave, previously unknown to humankind, now reveals Neanderthal artistic talents, rewriting the story of our shared past. The cave markings were created without the use of tools, but instead by scratching with human fingers. The distinct geometric shapes, with parallel and triangular lines, suggest that these marks were not random scribbles, but rather deliberate creations. Yet the precise meaning is unknown. 
Whoever made these marks demonstrated forethought and comprehension. Though this may be an example of artistic expression in Neanderthal humans, some archaeologists question whether the artifact represents a face, and others speculate that it may have been functional rather than artistic. What has been explored thus far is only a small portion of the vast cave system. Each discovery disproves the idea that Neanderthals were mentally inferior, instead defining them as cousins to modern humans. As discussed, 57,000 years ago, there were no modern humans in Europe, only Neanderthals, researchers believed until 2023. Therefore, the engravings could only have been made by Neanderthals, say French archaeologists, because they are the only hominins who left artifacts in the cave, and the entrance was sealed by sediments until modern times. However, sapiens and Neanderthal technology and artifacts cannot always be distinguished in the archaeological record because Neanderthals had spears, could glue stone tips onto wooden shafts, and had sophisticated napping technologies, especially towards the end. Neanderthal technology advanced over time, but sapiens may have been the first to discover the innovation of propelling their points, not just stabbing a deer or neighbor, but throwing spears from a safe distance, and later, developing the bow and arrow. The jury is still out on whether Neanderthals threw their spears, previously, their spears were thought to be too heavy to be properly projected, but a theoretical study using robust javelin throwers, debunked the notion, according to French archaeologist Ludovic Slimak. Even if Neanderthals could throw spears, arrows are a different kettle of fish. There is no evidence that Neanderthals had bows and arrows, which are mechanically accelerated weapons, but modern humans did, possibly as much as 70,000 years ago. Bow and arrow technology appears with evidence of modern humans in European contexts, dating up to 57,000 years ago the excavation of the Neronian settlement phases has revealed no less than 1,500 flint points their analysis of which shows that a significant number of them were used as armatures for arrows propelled with a bow. It is the very small size and, more precisely, the small width of these armatures, of which some 30% weigh hardly more than an ounce. The nearly 57,000-year-old nanopoints discovered in a French cave now push the technology's arrival in Europe back at least 10,000 years, and archaeologists speculate that their users may have poisoned the tips. The archaeologists suggest that bows and arrows and other propelled projectiles gave their owners a competitive advantage in hunting the local herbivores, horses, ibexes, bison, and deer. Indeed, among almost all traditional populations, the hunter is also the warrior, and martial activities are almost universally widespread among human populations. People can speculate about what humans did with their accelerated pointy projectiles and what the competitive advantage was, but it wasn't just target practice. Once upon a time, our sister species became extinct, and now, tens of millennia later, we are becoming aware of them again. Nevertheless, Neanderthals, the early colonizers of Eurasia, vanished into evolutionary obscurity, and this point has historically been depicted as a triumph for our species, a vision in which we are the successful conquerors.